I'm really focusing on the major driving forces in our contemporary society. And I think that the economic power and you know, the, the role that these huge corporations play in our society is, is huge, it's huge. They have an incredible influence. And I think that to get more wealth and to uh, also you know, working and all these kind of elements play a very, very big role in the, in the world that we're living in. The project that I'm well known for is the Table of Power. I photographed the boardroom table of the largest industrial corporations in Europe. And uh, I approached 40 corporations and uh, at that moment 19 denied access. And the companies who did not want to participate in my project, I gave them a black photograph in the exhibition and also in the book. I also asked them 10 questions about the use of their table, so it's a, t a kind of a taxonomy. And this kind of mapping and this way of looking at the world and uh, trying to understand through these conceptual projects is a very much a practice that I've been doing ever since. And I'm very interested in economic power and I'm very interested in the identity of spaces and what spaces mean to people. The spaces that I photograph are really a symbol for a much larger uh, kind of topic. And that's also the reason why my work is very much appreciated, not only in the art world, but also in a lot of other different worlds. And I love that. I think it's really interesting for me to exchange with uh, sociologists, economists, uh, you name it. A lot of people from different areas, they approach me to talk about my work. One could also say it for the series that I did on, uh, in, on the car industry. It's uh, car girls. It, it was a topic that I was very interested in. It was, you know, much more broader than, but then at the end I narrowed it down and I photographed these car girls. I was very interested in how global uh, huge corporations like the, um, in the auto industry uh, trying to reach like a local market and uh, how they distinguish themselves and, and also in relation to corporate identity. At one point I did a project called uh, Mindscapes. It was very much related to the economy in Japan and the United States and I was looking at the identity of private and public and I did a couple of projects at the same time and one of them was dealing with uh, fitting rooms in the fashion world because I think these rooms are really interesting. When you're in a, a public environment, you go into these rooms and then all of a sudden you undress and you, you're very, it's very private, very intimate, and you go out again and it's, it's a public space again. So it's a, I would call that a transition piece. And so I thought, well, what is, what is even more private than you know, the, the public uh, fitting rooms? And then I came into the haute couture world. And so I, thought, I approached um, all the major couturiers and I've been doing it for years. And actually all of them participated, uh, Valentino, Chanel, uh, you, na you name it, Christian Dior. And I photographed uh, their uh, fitting room for these very select group of women. So we went to Kyoto and I, we went to see these temples. In Japanese Buddhist architecture, there is no divide between private and public space because there, is no, there are no glass doors, there's nothing. There are these sliding doors, they open and they close and you, most of the time they're wide open. So whether it's going to be snowy and really cold or very hot in August, nature comes inside and uh, the inside space goes outside. And what I ended up doing is going very deep into the temple. So I put my tripod really, really sort of deep into the tatam, on the tatami. And so you had an equal amount of the private space of the temple as well as nature. So there was this combination going on. Once again, it's a very personal journey. I think that's the project that I've been doing in Kyoto. I think it, is a, it has a lot to do with, with my interest in space, but at the same time it's for also very intuitive kind of work. The space has become very abstract and I am almost started to work like a sculptor again. I create the temple becomes my own sculpture. I do also a lot of uh, self-portraits and in this uh, particular uh, project I do a self-portrait as a mica, 
a, a geisha in training. You feel like you're an actress. You feel like because of the of the the white uh, makeup and the hair and the impossible uh, shoes that you these clocks that you have to wear and the four layers of kimono that hardly and the obi. So you feel like you're sort of like a little <laughs> like a, a wooden kind of doll. Yes, Pinocchio kind of. And, and so you, you walk and you feel, you literally feel like you're playing a character. You're not yourself anymore. I just loved it. That was really interesting. It really tells a lot about how I, how I work, that I really want to sort of, as a chameleon, want to go into that world and to try it and to literally be, be in that world. I did it as a car girl. I was a Mercedes-Benz girl on the car show in Frankfurt. I did it in the Arab world. And, you know, I was in Saudi Arabia. I was you know, also dressed completely covered and on the street. Nobody had ever, that was photographed as well. And so that's kind of an element that's also part of the work.